Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be telling you 20 shows that I recommend you to watch to improve your English. A couple months ago, I made a very similar video, but for French. And since then, I've gotten so many requests to make this one. So here you go. The shows are going to be for all ages and all categories. If you guys are excited to improve your English, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. First, let me quickly discuss how and why watching TV shows can help you improve your English. Well, when you're watching TV, you're going to be listening to the actors and the characters' pronunciation, which is most likely the native accent. So the first reason is to improve your English accent. Some of you might be thinking, well, Gala, my English isn't that great, so I don't really understand what's going on. Well, that's actually a good thing, because you're going to be able to improve your comprehension. Because most likely when you talk to a native, you also don't understand what's going on. So by watching TV, you can improve. The next reason is speed. If you have an English teacher and English partner, they're most likely talking to you at a slower pace, so you understand. But TV shows don't do that. So you're going to be able to understand and know how fast natives actually speak. You're also going to be able to speak more like a native, because you're going to learn slang and the flow of English speakers. Now that you know why and how TV shows can help, let's get on with the video. Number one, Friends. Not only is this show one of my favorite shows ever, but it can also help you improve your English. Just in case you've never heard of it before, it's about the life of these six friends, Ross, Monica, Chandler, Phoebe, Rachel, and Joey. Hey, how you doing? Why is this a good show? Well, compared to other sitcoms, the dialogue is much slower and easier to understand. And because this is a show about people's lives, a lot of the vocabulary and dialogue can be used in real life situations. You're also going to be able to learn a lot of slang and common phrases. And because all of the friends or characters are very different, you're going to be able to learn lots of different activities and different slang. And also, this show is so funny, I guarantee you're going to love it. The second show is perfect for beginners and it's magic for humans. This show is very funny and it's about a magician and you can find it on Netflix. What is great about this show is that you're going to be able to learn lots of important, basic and simple directions. The third show is The Big Bang Theory. I love this show so much. So this show is about this nerdy group of friends that work together at the university and they do some research and experiments. And the show is about their life and their problems and everything in between. What is great about the show is that there are over 300 episodes, so I know you're going to be busy for a very long time. This show is so funny. And what is great is that the vocabulary that they use is very accessible and clear. And imagine you don't understand what's going on, their actions help you understand. Oh, and if they ever use any scientific vocabulary that you don't know, do not fear, because even us natives, we don't understand. <laughs> the fourth show is Love is Blind. This show is for intermediates because they have some challenging vocabulary. The show can be found on Netflix, and it's about what these people are willing to do to spend the rest of their lives with that special someone. The fifth show is Stranger Things. This show is super popular. What is great about this show is that you're going to be able to learn lots of teenage slang. And because most of the actors are teenagers, they speak a lot slower compared to adults, so it's easier to follow. You're going to be able to learn about American science fiction and recent past historical events of the US. This show is super engaging! The sixth show is A Hundred Humans. I recommend this show for intermediates because you're going to be able to see while well they explain, but the topic can be complicated. The show is about human behavior, psychology, and scientific studies. Seems super interesting. How are you guys liking the list so far? The seventh show is The Simpsons. You have most likely already seen or at least heard of this cartoon because it was released in 1989 and has been translated into more than 18 languages. Wow! 
This show is perfect for advanced learners because the dialogue can be very quick and they use a lot of cultural jokes, which might make it hard to follow, but it's a great challenge. You're also going to be able to listen to a lot of everyday vocabulary, which is great to know. And you're also going to be able to learn American slang. Wait, have you seen my video on American slang? The eighth show is Ozark. The show is an American crime drama thriller show. The show talks about drugs, finance, and money laundering. So the vocabulary isn't the easiest, which is why I recommend it for advanced learners. But you can find the show on Netflix, which is great. The ninth show is The Office. Feel free to choose between the American or the British one. I'm going to be focusing on the American one, but they both have the same story. So the show is about this day-to-day -day life of office workers at a paper company. What is great is that they use very simple vocabulary and the dialogue isn't super fast, so you're going to be able to understand. I know this story sounds kind of boring, but it's actually a lot of fun and I know you will get addicted. The good thing is, is that there are over 200 episodes, so you're going to be able to learn for hours. The 10th show is Walking Dead. In the show, Rick Grimes wakes up from a coma and realizes that most of humanity has a disease that turns them into zombies. So he decides to join a group and becomes their leader. The show has a lot of blood and violence and has gained a large following in the English speaking world. It can be challenging because there are a lot of different accents mixed in, like Old English and Southern American. But other than that, the dialogue is very easy to follow. Wow, guys, we're halfway done! The 11th show is Peppa Pig. This show is perfect for beginners because it was actually meant for kids. So the whole point of the show is to teach kids English, which means it will teach you English. The vocabulary is very simple and clear. The 12th show is, drum roll please, Brrr, Grey's Anatomy. This show is America's most loved medical sitcom. Can you believe it? The series alternates between the stories of the doctors and the patients. So slowly but surely, you're going to be able to get to know every character. This show does have a lot of scientific and medical terminology that even us natives, we don't understand. You will also hear a lot of idiomatic phrases or expressions that don't translate well into your language. But this show is perfect for you if you're interested in working in the medical field. The 13th show is Chain the Virgin. I love the show so much. This show is perfect for Spanish speakers as their transition show or as their first English show because a lot of the characters speak Spanish. The show is about this Latina who gets accidentally artificially inseminated. Sounds like a plot of a telenovela, right? That's correct! Because it was actually based on the Venezuelan show, Juana la Virgen. The 14th show is... Brrr, the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I love the show so much and it's so funny. The show is about these twins, Zack and Cody, who live at a hotel with their mom who sings there. They always find a way of getting in trouble with Mr. Mosby, who is the hotel manager. If you're a beginner, then this is perfect for you because you will be able to understand. And you're also going to be able to improve your informal English. The 15th show is Rick and Morty. This show is like a comedy and science fiction mixed together. In the show, Rick returns back to his daughter's house after 20 years and starts taking his grandson, Morty, to dangerous adventures out of space. This show is perfect to understand American humor. This show has a lot of adult humor and crazy scientific themes. And this show is for intermediates because even though the scientific terms that they use are fake, it can make it hard to follow. The 16th show is That 70s Show. The show takes place in 1970, I know, totally unexpected, and it's about a group of teenagers and all their adventures and daily life. 
This is such a dynamic show because each character has a very unique personality. They talk about various topics which is perfect for improving your English. And you're going to be able to listen to teenage slang which is perfect for you guys. Oh, and did I mention that there are over 200 episodes, so get your popcorn ready! The 17th show is How I Met Your Mother. At first, the show might be confusing because it's set in the future. I think year 2030. But once you get used to the idea of a show that is set in the future, it won't be confusing. And like Friends, the English that they use is very practical and perfect for socializing. You're also going to be able to hear lots of slang, which is perfect to be able to speak like a native. And you're going to want to keep on watching more episodes because you want to know how he met their mother. The 18th show is Desperate Housewives. This fun drama is set on a small suburban street called Wisteria Lane in the fictional, meaning not real, town of Fairview and it follows the everyday life of this group of totally different women. What is really interesting about this show is that it's actually narrated by a woman who died in the first episode. This show is perfect for improving your English because the English that they use is very natural and unforced. Also, the vocabulary covers lots of different topics and it switches between formal and informal. You will also hear different phrases that Americans use a lot, which is perfect for improving your English. The 19th show is Lost. This show is about a group of people that survived a plane crash and that find themselves in an apparently remote Pacific Island. While they're waiting for help, they need to learn how to survive and with each other. This show is perfect for English learners because you're going to be able to hear different accents like American, Australian, British, and Scottish. And the vocabulary is varied because each character is very unique. The 20th and last show is Modern Family. The show is about these three related families and all their weird problems. This show highlights differences and you're going to hear about gay marriage, adoption, rivalry between siblings, and romance. The characters have a very diverse and unique background, so they each speak and act very differently. For example, Gloria speaks English with a Colombian accent, and Haley uses a lot of teenage and internet slang. Wow guys, 20 shows! That was a very long list. Hopefully you guys found a couple shows that you guys are excited to watch. And comment down below if you've seen any of the shows that I recommend and let me know what you thought about them. Well guys, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next week. Bye guys!